All right, you saw the title, so I'm not going to waste too much time before just hopping into this. I do want to add the disclaimer, this is not the most optimal method. I will discuss a slightly faster one, but since I didn't have four capture cards, I never really tried it out. Even then, I'm sure there are even faster methods than that one. You can tell from the length of the video, there's uh, quite a bit to know. But if you do know most about the hunt already, then you're in good luck. I have all the sections marked, so feel free to scrub through the parts you personally already know, and then you can just get to the information you need. With the method I'll be showcasing, I was averaging 30 eggs about every 57 minutes. Some cycles got to as low as 55 and a half minutes for 30 eggs. When I finally stopped being lazy and looked up methods, I saw that people were saying 16 per hour was pretty normal for the hunt, so this method crushes that. Since not everyone knows how to hunt Manaphy, I want to share the basics before jumping in. So how does a hunt work? Every egg gets a number called an ESV when it is generated. If the number matches a hidden number on your save called a TSV, then the Pokemon that hatches from the egg will be shiny. If the numbers do not match, then the Pokemon will not be shiny. When you send the Manaphy egg from Pokemon Ranger, the game makes sure that the ESV of the egg will never match the TSV of the trainer receiving the egg. In other words, it's shiny locked on the game that receives the egg. Now luckily, every game has their own TSV. So after you get the egg, you can send it to other games to see if the egg's ESV matches that save file's TSV. If it still doesn't match, try another game. Are you out of games? Well, better restart one and play through till you can trade eggs. You repeat this process until the stars align and the magic ESV matches a save files TSV. Then you'll have yourself a shiny Manaphy. One thing I want to mention is the Pokemon sprite on the hatch screen will always reflect the original trainer's TSV. Since Manaphy can never be shiny for its original trainer, it will always appear as a normal Manaphy on the hatch screen, even if it's shiny. And this is a very brief explanation of how the hunt works, but I hope it gets the point across. Just in case you're still a little confused, here's the explanation without all the jargon. The first save file receiving the eggs cannot get a shiny, at least according to the internet. Send the eggs to a new save and hatch the eggs. If none are shiny, reset your save file, play through until you can catch Pokemon, catch 5 Pokemon for trade fodder, start trading. You don't need more or less Pokemon unless you're using less than 4 eggs. Now let's move on to the required and recommended items for this hunt. First and foremost, I do not recommend this hunt if you don't have custom firmware installed on a 3DS. Custom firmware is free, the only cost is buying an R4 cartridge, and it's been a long while since I've had to install custom firmware on my system, so you might not even have to buy an R4 anymore. So feel free to check out if there are new methods that don't involve them. Regardless, I only paid like 15 or 20 bucks for my R4 cartridge, so it's not like they're extremely pricey or anything. I'll go more into why you absolutely need custom firmware after finishing the requirements section. You'll need a minimum of two games and two systems to shiny hunt Manaphy. However, if you want to do this method, you'll need five systems along with five games. Only four of which need to be diamond, pearl, or platinum. The other can be heart gold or soul silver. The last few items aren't required, but highly recommended. If you're recording your hunt, record in .mkv format. This will allow you to open your current recording session without having to stop your recording. Meaning if you miss something, you can just pop the video up, no problem. Next up, make something to let you run without pressing B. I use the mighty tools of tape, rubber bands, and a piece of paper. I know, some high tech stuff, right? The last thing you need is a copy of Pokemon Ranger. Any copy of Pokemon Ranger will do if you listened and got custom firmware before starting the hunt. So, if you weren't aware, one of the biggest obstacles for hunting Manaphy used to be finding copies of Pokemon Ranger that still had eggs on them. However, thanks to custom firmware, this is no longer an issue. If you didn't know, Pokemon Ranger can only send one Manaphy egg per cartridge. Meaning if you buy a copy of Pokemon Ranger and the egg has already been sent, then you can't get another egg. This is because Hal and Creatures made a flag to check if the game has already sent a Manaphy egg before. Once the flag is set, it can't be reset by just deleting your save file from the game. 
Well, this is where custom firmware comes in. Custom firmware comes with an app called Save Tool, which allows you to essentially delete all data on a cartridge. It's pretty much a factory reset, and it includes resetting flags like the Manaphy egg. So this eliminates the need for hunting down multiple unused ranger copies in the wild. Now you just need one copy and it doesn't matter if it has an egg or not. This in itself is a good enough reason to recommend custom firmware, but it's not the main reason you need it. Like I said, now you only need one copy of Pokemon Ranger, except you'd still have to play through the game as many times as you want eggs, which is no bueno. Solution? Custom firmware of course. Once you beat the game, all you have to do is make a save backup using Checkpoint, another custom firmware app, before sending your eggs over. Then proceed to send the egg to a Gen 4 game, afterwards reopen Checkpoint and restore your save to before you sent the egg. Problem solved. Now you just have to struggle to get through Pokemon Ranger once and you're all set. I used 10 eggs in my hunt, so this method saved me 90 hours in Pokemon Ranger playthroughs. Not even mentioning the ungodly amount of time it would have taken me to hunt down 10 freaking copies of Ranger that still had eggs. Now you might be thinking if that's the only reason why you need custom firmware, it's not really all that necessary, is it? Well, if that was the only thing it was used for, you would be right. However, those are nothing compared to the real reason you need it. Back. Up. Your. Eggs. I can almost guarantee at some point one of these things will happen. You'll get to a point where you can't make it into the union room to trade before your eggs start hatching. You'll accidentally save after hatching four eggs and will no longer have those eggs in rotation. Or you'll accidentally delete the game save before you even send the eggs over. Regardless of what happens, if you do any of them and didn't back up your eggs, well those eggs are gone forever and you just have to accept it. Not only would you be missing out on multiple potential shinies, you'll be hatching fewer mons per batch, meaning it's just going to take even longer. So do yourself a favor, if you want to do this hunt, get custom firmware. Alright, that's all the requirements out of the way, next up is the egg prep before we start hunting. First off, it's better to get your eggs to their last egg cycle before backing them up. This saves you from having to run your eggs back down to the last cycle over and over again. Second thing, mark your eggs. This method involves simultaneous egg hatching, so just save yourself some confusion and mark your eggs. This way you can track which eggs have hatched on which game. In the beginning, I was just tracking them on a piece of paper like so. Eventually, in the last six months of the hunt, I got a drawing tablet and started using that instead to track eggs. I made a super quick layout and just used it to mark the eggs when they hatched, and here's that. As you can see, I put almost no effort into that. I marked my eggs in batches of two because two is the smallest amount of eggs I trade at one time. This also helps speed up the egg restoring process if you make a mistake. If your eggs are marked, then you only have to get the eggs back that have the same marking as the one that you hatched. Whereas if all your eggs are blank, you'll either have to hatch them all to find the identical Pokemon, or you'll have to use all the eggs from the egg backup, and that'll just take longer to get them in rotation. Now I quickly glanced over running your eggs down to the last cycle, but just in case you don't know what that means, I'll give you a rundown on egg mechanics in Gen 4. Pokemon don't hatch in a traditional take X amount of steps and the egg will hatch. Instead, each Pokemon has a set amount of egg cycles it must complete before hatching, which is based on its species. In Generation 4, egg cycles count down every 255 steps taken. It will count down the egg cycle for every egg in your party until an egg hatches. If a Pokemon hatches, every Pokemon after it will not get its egg cycle counted down. This is to prevent multiple eggs from hatching at once. According to Cerebee, Manaphy has an average step requirement of 2560 steps, which means it takes 10 to 11 egg cycles to hatch. Keep in mind the egg cycle countdown is something tracked on the save and is not something that follows the egg. The egg only keeps track of how many cycles it has left to hatch. Meaning in one save you can be 5 steps from hatching your first egg, but if you trade those eggs to another game, you could be 155 steps away from your first hatch. So theoretically, you can keep your eggs on the last cycle forever while you hunt, but unfortunately RNG is a thing and people make mistakes. 
This is why you always want to make a backup of your eggs. You never know when something is going to go wrong, and go wrong it will, trust me. Last thing you need to know about eggs is flame body and magma armor are worthless in this hunt. Well, if you run your eggs down. Both abilities don't have the steps before an egg cycle is counted down. Instead, it counts down two egg cycles every 255 steps. Since your eggs are already on their last cycle, this ability does jack for us. Running down the eggs is rather simple since we have an on-screen guide and the step counter. Just run about 2200 steps and save in front of a PC. Then the testing can begin. Run 100 steps, if nothing hatches, save in front of the PC and repeat. Keep doing this until your first egg hatches. Jot down or memorize what step count you were on. Check which egg hatched and reset your game. Deposit the egg that is about to hatch in the PC and save again. Now run the amount of steps it took for the deposited egg to hatch. If another egg tries to hatch, repeat the process, check what egg hatched, and reset. Deposit the egg, save, and repeat. If you do run past the egg count and no more eggs hatch, that means you know you have a minimum of 255 steps before another egg cycle is counted down. So just run closer to the 255 steps, save in front of the PC, repeat the whole thing over again. Realistically, this should only take you like 20 to 30 minutes. So it's not the biggest time sink in the world and it's gonna save you a ton of time in the long run. We've got everything prepared. Now it's time for the hunt. Oh boy. I'm dreading even trying to explain this cause I'm pretty trash at it. First off, if you're using 10 eggs like I recommend, four eggs will always be traded between the main three games that you're hatching on. Four eggs will be on the fourth copy of Diamond, Pearl, or Platinum, and this game will also be used to hunt on, but for the most part, it will be an egg holder. The last two eggs will be on your fifth DS and fifth game. Again, this can be any Gen 4 game, including Heart Gold or Soul Silver. This game is only used as an egg holder cartridge, so I also recommend making it the game that you back up all 10 eggs on. Since the game is only holding eggs, you'll never have to worry about what game messes up an egg because this game is only here to hold eggs. If you plan on using 8 eggs, you don't need the 5th DS or game. However, that's 2 less Pokemon per batch, meaning it will probably be not as efficient. Alright, now for the 3DS's actually doing things. Okay, so I figured the best way to explain this method is to show it off and explain everything that is happening as it happens. For simplicity's sake, I will be calling each game by the number that appears on screen now. I always start and stop the hunting session at the same place just to make picking it up easier. I recommend you do the same. When I start hunting for the day, Game 1 will be ready to receive the eggs to hatch. Game 2 is about to leave your hometown or is in Barry's house. That just depends on how quickly I get the eggs hatched when I'm stopping for the night. Game 3 will have just finished up their 10 eggs and need to trade 4 eggs before resetting. Game 4 is holding 4 eggs and Game 5 is holding 2 eggs. So at the start, I begin by trading 4 eggs from Game 3 to Game 1 while playing through Game 2. By the time I finish trading the eggs over, Game 2 should be leaving their hometown again after getting their starter or just arriving in Sanjim Town. I restart Game 3. When you delete a save, you can turn your DS off and on as soon as it starts deleting and it will still fully delete the save. I did this sometimes, but not all the time. After hatching the eggs in Game 1, I'd reset, jot down the egg marks hatched, and go back into the Union Room. Game 3 will just be entering the actual game. I always change the settings and save. I do this in case I accidentally turn off the game or reset without saving. When doing your egg cartridge trade for game 1, always trade the 4 eggs from game 4 first. This matters so you won't have to do as much waiting to hatch the eggs on game 2. By the time I was done trading in game 1, Game 2 would be either waiting in the Union Room already, or just finishing up catching its last Mons. Game 3 should be chatting with Birch or somewhere right around there. I continue hatching my next batch of 4 eggs on Game 1. In Game 2, I start trading with Game 4 to get the 4 eggs from it. 
This way it isn't taking the two eggs that haven't been hatched by game one. Once your four eggs have been hatched in game one and they've all been jotted down, go back for the final two eggs. I still would be finishing up the eggs on game two while game three starts catching mons. Finish trading eggs and hatch the last two on game one. Continue hatching the first four eggs on game two and finish catching your five mons on game three. All three of these tasks should be finished right around the same time, give or take a minute. Now this is where things change up a bit. Since game four has no eggs and it's a copy of diamond, pearl, or platinum, go ahead and delete the save at some point. This is where I could have saved even more time on the hunt. Had I started playing through on game four when I had free time, it would have sped the hunt up even more. But again, I didn't do this because I didn't want low quality webcam footage for one of the DS's. Well, I guess I should say for the actual gameplay because the, the webcam was there literally just to show that I wasn't tampering with the eggs off screen. Anyway, back to the part where the hunt changes up a bit. Start trading the four eggs from game one to game three. While you are doing this, you will finish up your first four eggs on game two, and so you can go ahead and start trading for the two eggs from game five. You will be able to trade and hatch both of these eggs well before game three even hatches its first four eggs. Normally I would be finishing up the trade for the first four eggs for game three, or I would have one or two eggs hatched. Regardless, go ahead and delete the save on game one. Game 2 has hatched all eggs except for the ones that Game 3 has right now, so they gotta wait. Game 3 needs to finish up its eggs. Once all the eggs are finally hatched on Game 3, Game 1 should be right around the beginning. You can continue playing through Game 1 and start trading the eggs between Game 2 and 3. Again, with this downtime, it would have been prime opportunity to start playing through on game four some, but I didn't do this. Instead, I just hunted for Ponyta. Still, you can do that. Game one should be closing in on Birch's lap by the time game two and three are ready to hatch the next four eggs each. By the time games two and three finish hatching their eggs, game one should be catching the first Mon. Since game two has already hatched all ten eggs, I would take the cartridge out and swap it with a cartridge in game 4, thus making it the new egg cartridge and the game that was originally in game 4 becoming part of the three games we hunt on. Again, if I had another capture card, I wouldn't have had to swap the cartridges, but you make do with what you got. Anyway, game 2 can now start doing the introduction and running through the beginning of the game as game 3 trades for and hatches its last two eggs. This is where we've come full circle. By the time the last two eggs are hatched in game three, game one should have all five mons caught and be ready to trade. Game two should be ready to leave your hometown and game three is ready to send its eggs and reset. And that's it, that's the whole method. But there is one more kinda two tips that I wanna share before wrapping up. First, buy two potions from the Mart when getting your Pokeballs. There's a few reasons why, one being that there's a chance you can get crit in your very first battle you have before you can even talk to the Mart assistant on Route 201. Plus, if you're dumb like me, you'll just forget to talk to the dude before you actually need the heals. The reason why I'm talking about healing when you could just walk to the center is because you don't want to do that. If you occasionally have to run to the Pokemart to heal, then you are adding variance into what could have been a more consistent run. If you avoid taking trips to the center, and you get lucky with only critting one or less Pokemon, you can generally have about five to six back and forth in the Pokemon Center before your first egg hatches. If you know this, you can run back and forth in the center a few times before trading your first batch of eggs, thus shortening the time it takes to hatch the first egg. I would also try to count how many back and forths it takes for me to hatch the first egg so I can run them down even more before trading my next batch of eggs. It only saves a few seconds, but seconds add up if you go as long as I did. Alright, that's it. You now have the knowledge you need to know to hunt Manaphy as optimally as I could figure out at the time. If you happen to find shiny Manaphy, please feel free to let me know because I'd love to see it. If this video helped you out, or if you just think I did a good job explaining this hunt, feel free to drop a like. Thanks for watching.
any Gen 4 game, including Heart Gold or Soul Silver. So Silver. Custom firmware comes with an app called Save Tool, which allows you to essentially delete all save data on a cartridge. I said data. <laughs> Damn it. If you happen to find Shanny Man, if you happen to find Shanny Shanny Man, if you 